All right, so next, I want to play with this column a little bit more, but instead of doing direct adjustments, which would change everything in the layer, which were the levels, the color balance, the hue saturation, I'm going to show you how to do direct tool adjustments. So tools are here. And if you look at what looks like a black lollipop, that opens the drawer for the most common direct adjustment tools. Dodge, burn, and sponge. Dodge will brighten, burn will darken, and sponge will either saturate color or desaturate color. So let me start with burn because what I feel like I need for this column is a little bit stronger of a core shadow on it. So just like the, the eraser I was using to blend, I'm going to take my exposure down. This is like softening it. So it's not so strong. Always less than 20, pressure sensitive, and I use a brush that has 0% hardness and is pretty big. Probably around 300 pixels big. Right? I'm going to only affect the midtones. Now what this is doing, I'll do it on a duplicate, so you can see, is it's affecting the pixels within that layer, but it's only affecting them where I paint, where I use my tool. And this is primarily how you adjust photos in a dark room, you know, analog photography. So you just noticed I burned a lot. I just burned right down that column, but that wasn't painting. That was darkening the levels of the midtones of just the pixels where I touched. Now if I use dodge, same thing. I wanted an exposure of less than 20. I want a pressure sensitive with a large size with 0% hardness. This will do the brightness. So I can brighten this edge, the midtones of this edge, right where I touch, and maybe of this edge. Kind of strengthen that contrast on that column, right? And even vary it in the shadows a little bit. And look how different that is. So that is using direct tool adjustments. Now, it's a good idea to do it on a duplicate, especially if you're just getting used to these tools, because it's really easy to overdo it. Really easy to overdo it. And if you do it on a duplicate, then you can always just use opacity and blend it into what's already there behind it. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to blend it a little bit. I think that looks good. Right? I think that's an improvement to the lighting. And so I'm going to merge those two together. Select both of them and then say layer merge layers. And now I'm on to my new foreground element and cleaning that up. Whew. Now maybe before I clean it up, I can use this new skill. Maybe there's some places I want the midtones to be brightened, like on the top of this rock. On the edge here. It looks like there's quite a bit of light. And then maybe there's areas I want to darken the shadows, so I can use the burn tool. Same thing. It will remember my settings. So I can burn in the shadows. Now remember, if I want to be safe, I can do it on a duplicate. So Command J, and then dodge and burn on this duplicate. Because we tend to overdo it. Now this is a good example of where I might want to use the next tool, which is the sponge tool. The sponge doesn't lighten, it doesn't darken, but there's pretty intense green there. And it's not that I don't like the green, it's just pretty intense. So I'm going to use the sponge tool, and I'm going to set it to desaturate and I'm going to set it at a flow of less than 20. And I'm going to use a large brush, 0% hardness, just like the eraser, just like dodge and burn. And you're going to see it starts to take the color down just a little bit. It takes the saturation, the intensity away from the color, just like hue saturation would do for the entirety of the piece. And if I set it to saturate, it will bring that saturation back. So if I want this purple to be stronger, I can get it there. 
I'm not painting anything, I'm just bringing out what's already in those pixels. Which is why when you're doing color adjustments, you don't want to let your pixels go to solid black or solid white, because then you don't get this, this option. So that was my duplicate. I kind of like this on top. Maybe I'll burn it a little bit more. I can also burn the highlights, right, if they're just too strong. Kind of burn those down a little bit. I want it to look wet and shiny, but I don't want it to be distracting. All right, now I can merge those layers together. I can decide if I want to blend the opacity or not. And now I think I'm pretty good. So I'm going to select them both, merge them together. And now I can cut it out. Now, instead of trying to softly blend this with my eraser, right, at 100% opacity, I could start that way, but that purple is very different than the yellow of the rocks behind it. So instead, I'm just going to use my lasso. And I'm just going to find that edge and draw it with my one pixel feather. And I can do it in chunks. Now, remember, once you make a selection, you can also subtract from the selection by holding down Option. And you can add to the selection by holding down Shift. but I mostly need to subtract. Oops. Hold down Option, or add to it maybe with this, cut it down a little bit more. All right, so now if I hit Delete with that one pixel feather, you'll see that it softens it the more I hit Delete. So I get this nice crisp edge. And then I just want to extend that down. Okay, let's see. Now that's going to get covered up. I wonder if I try to transform it. If I can push a little bit away from this, this edge, and if maybe that could be something I blend in with the rock to get a more interesting solution. And I think maybe that's true. So I can warp, and then I can use my eraser at 100% opacity, and I can just slowly bite away just here and let these two rock surfaces, which are very different colors, start to blend. And then I go to a lower opacity, and I just blend it a little bit more. So that these rock textures start to meld together.
All right. So some powerful tools here for making things match. Okay, next. Foreground element, this crazy rock. I cut out a lot of it already with my lasso last time. But how can I make it look more believable and more organic? Let's try a three pixel feather. And now when I cut around this rock, because I'm just kind of making my own texture, I'm going to jiggle my hand a little bit not to be so smooth and then when I delete it's gonna soften it as I go but I need to be in the right layer remember you can only delete from the layers you're affecting so that looks a lot better just that edge so I'm gonna continue that with my little shaky arm technique. It's hitting delete. Finding the shape I want to keep. That'll be on. In about 15 minutes, we'll turn in what we have. Okay, so now I've kind of cut out that rock. Let's cut this one out. And this is very different. So we're going to use another tool adjustment. You see how super sharp this is and how super blurry this is. So I'm going to do another kind of jagged cutout with my three pixel feather. Just right along the edge of this, this rock column. You can do it in chunks. Oops, got to be on the right layer. You can always do Command-Z or go back in your history. Come on. But we're moving from the background to the foreground. Cutting things out. Now that I'm in the foreground, it's like looking past your hand, right? Like that exercise we did last class. So I'm using a three pixel feather to help soften it out a little bit. 